just remain here. Okay. Yeah, so there's um, information on the table up here. So if you want a brochure, uh, there's an uh, information card. So if you'd like to receive information from us, you'll fill out one of those cards, give it back to me. But there's also uh, pre-college information. So if you're interested in summer programs, trying to learn what art school is all about during the summer, uh, you have that option. But there's also a magazine called RISD XYZ that showcase alumni, what they're doing after graduating. So those are free. You don't have to give them back, take it. Uh, it's yours. So my name is Antonio. I graduated from RISD in 2004 from the illustration department, originally from Georgia. Uh, RISD is one of the top art schools in the country. Uh, we uh, have students come from all over the country, uh, about 2,400 full-time students. Uh, it is our mission to educate our students in the importance of art and design, to take what you learn in the studio, what you experience in the studio, and apply them to world world problems. Students who come to RISD uh, will be a part of a creative community. Uh, students are interested in graphic design, printmaking, painting, ceramics, jewelry. There are a wide variety of um, studies that you can pursue at RISD. Uh, it is a studio-based education. It is a critique culture. This is a process-oriented environment, so you deal with a process. Uh, we encourage students to work in collaboration with each other. When we're looking at your application, we try to get a sense of how you're going to impact the studio environment, how are you going to bring uh, an interesting perspective to the studio experience. Uh, not just in the studio experience, but also in the community. So when you're applying to schools, think about how you are representing yourself through your application, through your portfolio, uh, through all the materials that you have to submit to us um, uh, when you are applying as an applicant. It's a peer-to-peer -peer learning environment as well. So you're learning uh, from each other, not just from your faculty. So again, in the application process, are you impacting each other? What can you learn from me? What can I learn from you? Uh, does your application show that you're ready for the rigor of RISD? Uh, good grades, uh, good uh, SAT scores, ACT scores are very important. But again, it's very important to show that you have strong work ethics, uh, that you have good time management skills, because uh, it is a fast-paced environment. Uh, you will be um, supported in many different ways through uh, the offices on campus, like student affairs, uh, academic affairs. You also have uh, resident advisors, orientation leaders, peer mentors who will help you with your transition from high school to college. You will have access to many facilities. I do have pictures of um, our facilities, so I'll show that. Uh, all first year students are required to go through a foundation year. So when you're looking at art school, how many of you are interested in going to art school? All right, wow, okay, good, 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 good. So do your research, um, look at schools that require a foundation year. Some schools do not require a foundation year. RISD does require a foundation year. It's called the Experimental Foundation Studies. So on your application, when you get to the point where you're going to apply, we, uh, you, we allow you to indicate three majors. Uh, one major, two majors, three majors, or you can put undecided on your application, but you're not bound to that at all because you have to go through a foundation year. So it's made up of 2D, 3D drawing, and you have two liberal art courses on top of that. So here's a typical schedule for a freshman. So you go at 8 in the morning, get up 5 in the afternoon, one studio is a full day. And then you have liberal arts on the days you do not have studio. So this is a typical schedule for a freshman during the fall semester, spring semester. Your schedule would be completely different with all new students, with all new projects. So in the spring semester, your studios might be on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, while your two liberal arts are on Monday and Tuesday. You're split up into smaller groups. The freshman class, let me begin with that. The freshman class is roughly 470. You'll be split into smaller groups of about 20 students. So the student-teacher ratio is 20 to 1. Uh, and you'll share those three studios together. Spring semester, that group of 20 students will change with all new faculty, all new students. Uh, your, uh, your, basically, your schedule is already planned out for you. A lot of your assignments will be uh, focused on limitation restriction, creative problem solving, use your visual skills to come up with solutions. So in the bottom right, uh, bottom left corner, students have to create a container based on a nature lab object. Uh, so the students have to use cardboard, color in the drawing class, working from observation. So you also have students uh, working on creating drawing instruments. So in this drawing class, students have to bring spatial dynamics into their class. They have to invent a drawing instrument and then demonstrate it in the middle <coughs> class. Uh, color and spatial dynamics combined together. So you, have, you see how uh, 2D informs 3D, 3D informs drawing, drawing informs 3D. Portrait that you see is actually made out of pop charts and food coloring. So you come up with unconventional answers. Uh, you use unconventional materials as well. You bring meaning to materials. In the bottom left corner, students have to create 
an egg beater that could do three different things. It had to crack the egg, scramble the egg, and uh, well, transport the egg. But it had to do all three things, but be one device. So again, there's a lot of creative problem solving that goes into your projects. Uh, they bring in science, technology. Uh, so there's a lot that you could do during the foundation year. So you also have um, 3D printers that you can use, laser cutters. Uh, you can bring in a, an element of music and see how that inspires your designs. The retention rate is very strong. The graduation rate is very strong at RISD. This speaks to RISD's commitment to its students and the students' commitment to RISD. Again, the student teacher ratio of freshman year is 20 to 1. When you get into your departments, it's about 15 to 1. Uh, but it also depends on the populator of certain majors. Architecture is very popular, film, animation, video, graphic design, illustration, industrial design, painting, and sculpture. Those are our biggest majors. Smallest majors, glass, ceramics, and jewelry, those are our smallest majors. Uh, you can double major at RISD if you like. If you're not interested in double majoring, you're still required to take courses outside of your major. Uh, we do not have minors, so uh, uh, again, think about uh, what kind of structure you want to be in. RISD is very structured. You go into your foundation year, your freshman year, you go into your sophomore year, you go into your major. There are certain schools that um, allow students to have an open curriculum, so you can take many courses in many different majors. Uh, RISD, you have your major, you take your core courses, but you have the opportunities to take courses outside of your major, uh, but we do not have an open curriculum. So here are examples of student work, uh, from apparel all the way to textiles. So we have 16 majors that you can choose from. Again, as a first year student, when you're applying, you're not bound to the major that you apply to, uh, that you are submitting on your application. So again, you can submit uh, three majors that you have an interest in, but you're not bound to that. Your portfolio doesn't have to be geared towards a major either. So, um, but your freshman year, you will declare your major in the spring semester of your freshman year, and you're guaranteed your first choice in your major. You do not have to apply to the school again to get into your major, like some other institutions. Any questions in regards to the majors? Again, you can double major, you can take courses outside of your major, you can approach your major in many different ways. I'm going to use ceramics as an, uh, as an example. You can work with functional, non functional. I've got yeah. a question. So, with the, um, the schedule that you showed us for freshman year, uh, would that be similar for sophomore year? If you it would be a little different. Um, I'm going to use my uh, experience uh, as an example. So, when I went into illustration, so I declared illustration. My studio classes began at 1.10 in the afternoon. They went until 6.10 at night, uh, which left my mornings for local arts, uh, which I did not do. I had all my local arts in the evening, so I could sleep in the morning. So I'm not a morning person, so I had all my classes in the evening. So um, there are other departments where you could still follow the freshman year kind of schedule, like industrial design. You go in at 8 in the morning, your studios will go until like 6 or so. Yeah, so it all depends on the major and what time that studio is available. And is the studio typically six hours, five or six hours, mm -hmm. as opposed to cut up into two, three hours? Yep, yep. I have a quick question. Yep. Um, I'm going to be showing this presentation to some of my architecture students who may be interested as well. Could you in kind architecture? Of give some, yeah, could you give some insight into the architecture major, kind of what it would be like for a freshman? Yeah, so um, for students who are um, interested in architecture. Again, uh, all students are required to go through the foundation year no matter what they put on the application. Let's say they put architecture, the process is still the same, the structure is still the same. Uh, for students who are interested in pursuing architecture, we do look for an emphasis in math in the application. Uh, we also encourage students, uh, well in the, I'm saying more about the portfolio now, but, um, but trying to show more observation drawing of space, okay. interior space, exterior space, but also playing around with uh, conceptual space, um, experimenting with different type of materials. Uh, so for sophomore year for architecture students, um, architecture students actually share their sophomore year with graduate students, people who have already have a degree, that have one degree, two degrees already, who have a background in music, um, ceramics, um, culinary arts. Uh, so architecture is a four, five year program. So you go for four years, get a BFA, and then you go for your fifth year, get a <coughs> Bachelor of Architecture. Uh, so a lot of the students, um, you will find uh, 
in studio quite a lot. Yeah, so exactly, with yeah. architecture, uh, you also have to keep in mind architecture within an art environment. So there's a lot of exploration, experimentation, yeah. very, um, uh, very experimental. Yeah. Uh, compared to, I always use um, Roger Williams as an example. That's in um, Pro that's in Rhode Island. So they have an architecture program, but they're not part of an art school. So in our environment, you are in architecture, but you're surrounded by printmakers, you're surrounded by architects, um, industrial designers, interior architecture, uh, ceramics, jewelry, textiles, and you can bring those um, those inspirations, those influences into the studio compared to Roger Williams where they may not have that right. okay. that much. Well, they have creativity, but it's like different. Right, it's different. But it's different. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, so I always encourage students who are interested in architecture, do you want to be in a creative environment where you're surrounded by other artists and other ideas, or be in an architecture program within a university that may not have right, right. that many art programs. Okay. But a lot of students do have access. They will come over to our school and go to our museum, talk to our students for modular okay. yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, let's see where I was. Oh, film animation video. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, film animation video. <laughs> So for our film animation video, it's like Sesame Street gone wrong. So we have a lot of stuff that students, I've, I've seen a lot of film animation video projects and you can see them on Vimeo. You can see them on uh, portfolios.rizzi.edu. So you can see a lot of film animation video um, materials. Uh, Seth McFarlane graduated from RISD. Uh, we also have uh, one of the creators of um, you know, Nickelodeon Air Avatar, the Earth, Wind, and Fire, and all that stuff. Yeah, graduated from RISD. Hmm? Uh, that, no, no, like, um, RISD alum helped animate that show, so it was really cool. Um, but yeah, so you have furniture, um, Del Chihuly graduated from RISD, I can name drop all day, but I'm not going to do that. But we have students who are working in the industry, I have friends who work at Marvel Comics, I have friends who work at DC Comics, um, some of my friends actually, um, actually one of my friends actually helped with the movie Pacific Rim, uh, with water effects. Which I had no idea you could make. Uh, you could have a major and you could have a focus on. Uh, but she helped with the wave effects in the first movie of Pacific Rim. So you have projections, you have glass blowing, uh, you have a combination of students bringing in other interests. So this was uh, a projector projecting into glass. Um, this project, students uh, created this piece where if you flicker your eyelashes onto the glass, the other person could feel it. I have no idea how that happened, but. It was real interesting. But bizarre. I mean, you have some bizarre stuff happen at art school in general. <laughs> Not just RISD, but art school. There's some really weird stuff. So you get into package design, you can get into user experience, um, posters. So there's a lot that you can do in terms of architecture and graphic design, apparel and architecture and apparel and design, graphic design. So there's a lot of crossover with the majors. So you're not just going in and working on comic books, you're working on fine arts, you're working on sculptures, you're working on um, technology, robotics. So there's a lot that you can bring in. Um, you have companies come in and work with students on projects. Uh, NASA works with the industrial design department. Uh, you have uh, publishers work with the illustration department. We had Todd Oldham come in and work with students in textiles. So there's a lot. Uh, the interior architecture department worked with the nature lab at RISD to redesign their space. Uh, to accommodate the aquatic system, the live wall. So, which I'll show that. Uh, so, this student uh, used 
Advil gel pills as the, uh, the gems in this crown, which I thought was really creative. Yeah, so students get very creative with like being resourceful. And there's a lot of exploration, experimentation. Again, bringing in movement, using painting and technology together. Yeah, what other questions I can answer? Doesn't have to be about Ritzy. Do you have any presentation about photography? Oh. Yeah, so photography. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> so photography, um, it's very uh, commercial, but also very fine art. But we're more on the fine arts side of photography. So this student took their prints, prints them out, and then turned them into butterflies and could, uh, yeah. created basically an installation. So there's a lot of uh, documentary photography, editorial photography, but more of fine arts. Uh, but also, how does uh, photography go into many different fields? I've seen students use photography and jewelry together. I've seen students work with photography and film. Uh, students worked with, uh, there was another student who created these sculptures in combination with the photography. I actually have some examples, which I can show if I have time. Uh, but it is, uh, so you go in your freshman year, sophomore year, you learn all the basics of photography, black and white, traditional photography. So there's still a dark room. So you have to go into this dark room and stay there for hours in this dark room. You wake up, it's dark. You go into darkness and you leave, it's dark. Um, I remember that was my experience of taking photography in the winter. I wish I had taken it in the spring when the sun and the days were getting longer. But I went in at dark and I stayed in darkness, left at dark. Uh, that, that's a process. I, I, yeah, I have to give it to people who do photography. You have to do all, who, who is taking the photography class? No one? Oh, oh God. yeah, it is an experience. Expensive, <laughs> Woo. and then like you have to do those test strips. I'm getting off the topic now, but yeah, you have to do those test strips. It's like ten hours later. It's like just print this thing for me, somebody. Yeah, oh. and trying to like get the film in the little cage thing at, in complete darkness. And it's like you draw it, and it's like, well, that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> So we teach that in graphics too. They have a little tent and they put their yeah. arms in it and they I'm just get stressed out just reliving. We only do black yeah. and white, but oh. yeah. Yeah, but you can do digital as well. So I love digital now. Yeah. <laughs> I was totally against digital, but I'm like, this is so much easier. But yeah, so you have textiles. So we always encourage students, I'm like, so if you have an idea, if you have a pattern, if you have a texture that you're working on um, um, on your projects. You can sample it and then superimpose it into another image. This is what the student did. So basically, took a picture of their friend's back with uh, a backpack and then superimposed it using Photoshop to show the concept of what it would look like as a bag. So if you can't make it, you can always digitally show a concept of it. Yeah. So a student using um, you know textiles to express um, particular perspectives. So we have broken into three terms. We have fall, spring, uh, fall and spring that are 13 weeks, and then you have winter session that is five weeks. So 13, five, 13 is our academic calendar. For winter session, you'll spend five weeks in a department that, uh, in a studio that uh, interests you in terms of drawing marathon. You can take a creature creations course. You can take an illustration class, a film course. Freshmen will take an introduction into a major that they're thinking about going into. If you know that you're going to go into graphic design, you can take another class that you know, interest you, maybe glass, maybe ceramics, furniture, printmaking, photography, furniture, uh, just, you have your options. My last year at RISD, I took a drawing marathon class that went from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day for two weeks, and then after that, class time was flexible. Uh, from there, they added on a drawing, uh, a sculpture marathon and a painting marathon. You can travel abroad during winter session for five weeks. You can go to Japan, Ghana, uh, students going to Mexico this year. So you have uh, opportunities to um, be involved in international exchange. Many universities offer international exchange. Uh, we offer uh, that and also European honors program where you get to live in Rome, Italy for one semester. Uh, so if you're a sophomore, the earliest you can travel abroad uh, would be winter session for a sophomore. Uh, if you want to do the international exchange or the mobility program or the European honors program, that would be your junior or senior year. So you do have opportunities to travel abroad. You also have opportunities to take internships as well. We do require liberal art courses. Uh, we value liberal arts. Uh, we want to make sure that you have a well-rounded education. So we do um, demand a lot from you, and uh, we put a lot of emphasis on the liberal arts. So you can have a concentration in any of the listed areas. 
Uh, you can also cross register and take courses at Brown University without having to pay extra tuition. You do not have to apply to Brown to take courses at Brown University. You can take Hatfield Liberal Arts. Uh, Brown is two semesters with three terms. You just have to figure out how the calendars match up. Uh, a lot of students will take advantage of that. Foreign language, uh, math class, a science course, anything that we do not offer, you can take at Brown University. There is a dual degree between RISD and Brown University. You have to be admitted to both institutions completely separate from each other. So you have to apply to Brown. You have to apply to RISD. 18 students will enroll into the program out of 500. So you have to be admitted to Brown, RISD. You cannot apply to both schools early decision. You can apply to one other early decision or apply to both schools regular decision. You'll have three acceptance letters. You have three advisors. You pay only one school, and that's Brown University. Brown will handle the bill. Brown will handle the scholarship opportunities. Let's say you get into RISD and Brown, but not the dual degree. You can then go to either RISD or Brown. But if you apply to Brown's early decision, then you are bound to go to Brown University. If you uh, get into the dual degree and you're not interested in pursuing it, you can either go to RISD or Brown. That RISD scholarship that you received in the admissions process will kick in and be used. Uh, but if you, so we get this a lot. So students who apply, they get a scholarship from Brown University, they get a scholarship from RISD. If you pursue the dual degree, that RISD scholarship will not go towards the dual degree. So just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. So you spend your first year at RISD, second year at Brown. You're going in between both Brown institutions. It's a five-year program. Uh, you have to give us an idea what is that you want to study with Brown University and Johnson, and almost said Johnson, but and Brown University. Woo! Yes. Um, try to not give us a general statement. I get the best of both worlds. You have to go a little bit beyond that. You know, what is it? What's possible? Cognitive science, film, animation, video, creative writing, illustration graphic design and business. So try to give us an idea of what is possible. So these are the facilities that we have at RISD Textiles, apparel, jewelry, film, animation, video, photography, furniture, um, painting, illustration, graphic design, printmaking. So we have a lot of facilities. Um, compared to other institutions, we have many buildings. We have about 45 buildings within the city of Providence. We also have a nature lab, which is a mini natural history museum. You have taxidermy animals, you have bugs and boxes. We have live jellyfish. Uh, so not everything in here is dead. There's a lot of critters. There's a snake that you can actually play with. And um, I was on a tour, and I was giving the tour, and one of the families didn't realize that one of the students had um, the pet snake in her hair. So she's, you know, standing next to her, and the snake started to like crawl near the lady. She started screaming. So um, we do have live critters. So there's like uh, a <coughs> container with the gigantic cockroaches in it that you can draw and look oh. at. Yeah, there's an aquatic system in this space as well. Uh, we do cater to uh, high school groups. So um, we do have a lot of high school elementary groups come in and use the nature lab. Uh, but you have microscopes that you can use, taxidermy animals, skeletons. I've seen industrial design students base a bicycle on a cat skeleton. We have a museum that's part of our school as well. So you have access to the nature lab, the museum, uh, the library. The library used to be a bank converted to a library and has over 16, uh, well, over 100,000 books dedicated to all 16 majors. There's a materials resource library as well. And so the city of Providence, how many of you have been to Providence? Yeah, I don't need to talk. Well, I guess I can't talk about Providence. Yeah, Providence is uh, very small. Uh, very small, yeah. But to me, it's a big city. I'm from, I'm near, uh, anyone heard of Athens, Georgia? Um, I've also been. You've been, the, been to you've been the Providence as well. My mom used to go there to college when she was, uh, well, in her teenager, well, way. Okay. Um, All right. Cool. Nice. But my mom used to go to college there when she first came to America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, and it's a very nice city. I mean, I I like Providence. It's a foodie city, so there's a lot of great restaurants. Brown University is right next to our campus as well, and so. Um, this is how big our campus is. So that building that you were just looking at, uh, that is where the library and the nature of uh, library, and that's where students can live. So we have a lot of opportunities for students to live on campus. Freshmen who live in this building complex. So you have the downtown area of Providence right here. You have the Something About Mary building here. So there's a lot of movies that being filmed in Providence. So there's the patch of grass on our <coughs> campus. We have a lot of grass, but not a lot of grass is Brown University, but um, we do have, uh, 
some grass on campus and you can see wildlife. So it's always a question, it's like, do you have a sense of campus? You do have a sense of campus, yeah. Um, do, people, do freshmen have their car there? Uh, you spend a lot of time paying tickets. <laughs> so we encourage students to not bring cars unless they live off campus. Then you, that's an extra cost on top of that too because you have to pay for parking. So when you get to college, you'll realize, you know, yes, you're paying for rent, but you also have to pay to park <coughs> on location of your house too. So the landlords do that. So we always encourage students to not bring cars, but if you want to bring a car, you have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out where to park it, especially when it snows. I'm pretty sure you all know, like the street van, and then you like struggle to try and find somewhere to park your car while it's snowing. Yeah, so you can, but you run that risk, yeah. But there is on-campus parking for students. It, again, it's an extra cost. Yeah, so you have um, 2,000, well, in total, 2,400 full-time students. Again, this is where freshmen live their first year, so housing is mandatory for two years. Um, after those two years, you can move off campus and, uh, or continue living on campus. Housing and dining is just under 15,000. Our base tuition is just under 50,000. Majority rooms are doubles. Um, no matter where you go, even if it's not RISD, make sure you are honest on those roommate questionnaires. Tell the truth. If you do not like all type of music, put it on the form. Uh, for us, we will have a question. So you actually determine who's going to be your roommate for your freshman year. It's a housing uh, portal. And so you can go into the portal, request, you know, send a request, hey, would you like to be my roommate based on compatibility. It's like match.com, but you're trying to find a roommate. So it's uh, very helpful, but be honest. I, on my, and I'm speaking from experience, I put that I like all music, and then I learned I do not like all music. So yeah, I learned my lesson. I was roomed with a person who plays the saxophone. And I'm like, oh no. Like 11 o'clock at night, playing the saxophone. I'm like, this is not Kenny G. You're like, what's going on, why? Yeah, it's like 11 o'clock at night. You just left the studio, and it's like all day drawing, and it's just like, Turn on the saxophone. I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And then at some point, he's sawing in our room. I'm like, dude, there's a studio right down the hall where you can saw. He was like, I'm like chainsaw master up in there. I was like, what is going on? It was like I wake up to sawing. I was like, the sawdust everywhere in the room. I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, never room with them after that. So <laughs> I'm like, we are done. Yeah, but dining facilities in different parts of our campus. Um, you have a student-run cafe. You have a cafe in the RISD store. So you have clubs and organizations that you can be a part of at RISD. So there's a lot of things that you can be a part of. So for our application, um, you have Common App and you have Slide Room. Those are the two platforms we'll use to evaluate students' application. We have two deadlines. November 1st, February 1st, early decision is binding. You'll get your decision around December 15th. Regular decision, you'll get your decision around March 27th, 26th. It will be an email saying, hey, go to your portal to find your uh, results. So we do require the Common App essay. Uh, it's up to you which prompt you want to write about. It's up to you. We have no preference. Uh, 650 words or less. Um, we also have been running into the situation with the essays where students are not giving us paragraphs. So they're just giving us one gigantic chunk of text. Couple sentences, hit return. Couple sentences, hit return. I was like, I don't know what's wrong, but I was like, I don't know why it can happen. But if you can't do that, just send me the the, the, the essay and I'll do it for you. Just give us some space, because it's just like you're trying to read this gigantic text, like block of text, and it's like very difficult. Um, trying to avoid those cliche lines. I always wanted to be an artist when I was little. We get a lot of that. And we don't want to hear it. Um, but I know you're applying to an art school. We know you're applying to an art school. We, you just don't have to say that. We had a student who wrote, oh, my mom gave me a crayon and I colored in the lines and then one day I crossed over the line and I was like, freedom. And I was like, okay, all right, sure. <laughs> don't wanna hear it. Uh, <laughs> but talk about, it would be even better if you don't even talk about art. Just talk about, I mean, one of the essays that I really remember, a student talked about her love of yogurt and she brought that in, like she, like, she somehow roped it into the experience of college. I was like, this is really cool. So a different perspective. Another student um, incorporated her essay into her uh, Facebook wall. So she posted her essay and then people responded and she basically did screenshots of it and uploaded it into a slide room. So that was very unique. Yeah. 
and recommendations are not required, but they do help. Art teacher recommendations, academic recommendations um, from your art teacher, academic teacher, guidance counselor, anyone who knows you really well, um, an employer who knows your work ethics, uh, grades 3.0 or better. I always encourage students to strive for 3.0 or better. Uh, we would take the last two years that are available for a high school senior. SAT or ACT, we do not have a minimum or required score. Do your best. Uh, we will super score the SAT or ACT. It's up to you which one you want to take. Uh, if you take it five times, we'll take the high score from each test. Uh, Duolingo, TOEFL, IELTS, if English is not your primary language, you are required to take it. Um, unless uh, you can give us some other reason why you shouldn't take the TOEFL or IELTS um, with the recommendation from your teacher, uh, but talk to us uh, in regards to that test. So portfolio 12 to 20 images of your best work. We ask that you submit the most recent work, fall semester, senior year, all of your junior year, uh, spring semester, sophomore year. Please do not show us anything for freshman year, anything from middle school, elementary. We've had that happen before. Show us risk-taking personality, original ideas and concepts. Do not show us fan art at all. We do not want to see Marvel Comics. If we can reference uh, Steven Universe, if we can reference Bleach, Powerpuff, I don't know what this stuff just fan art, just don't do it. We don't want to see it. Um, one point perspective hallways, trying to avoid that. I know a lot of architecture students tend to do the one point perspective hallways, and we see it, we're just like, no, don't do that. Uh, photography, do not show flowers, microscopic flowers, insects. Um, I, I just reviewed a student who um, submitted a, a, a photography portfolio in ACAD.slide room. And she took pictures of basil. And I'm like, this means nothing to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this picture of basil. I'm like, a squirrel could be at that. I'm like, why are you showing that? Bring some creativity to it. So um, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just like trying to give you the perspective of like, on my end, it's like, it's a picture of a horse. It's like, this horse is not saving the world. I'm like, what? Why take a picture of this horse? But it means something to you, but try to bring creativity to it. Anyone going to Portfolio Day tomorrow? Because that's what you're going to get tomorrow. <laughs> it's like uh, criticism, like, uh, it's, but it's constructive. It's like, but you really need to try to figure out anything that you show in your portfolio, how is it creative? Bring creativity to it. Bring meaning to it. Bring meaning to the materials. Yes? Um, uh, this is a little long, but I just have a question about, um, like, if you want to go into something that involves, like, like I want to go into animation, uh -huh. um, but, uh, would, you pref would they prefer if we were able to like, be able to like, use computer programs and stuff like that before? You don't have to know any of that before. Okay, good, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to know any of the fields that you're interested in before you get to RISD. Okay. So if you don't know animation, if you don't know architecture, if you don't know Rhino before you get to RISD, that's totally okay. If you don't know InDesign, what are the other programs? iCloud, vCloud, whatever the Adobe Cloud is. Yeah, yeah. Illustrator. Well, yeah, Illustrator. You don't have to know any of that before you get to RISD. Uh, we do not have a uh, list of classes that you have to take. Uh, we ask that you fulfill your high school graduation requirements. <laughs> yep. So uh, just fulfill your graduation requirements. Yep. So this is how we'll see your artwork in slide room. Uh, so make sure your art images take up the entire space. Make sure uh, you do not include text. Um, I was at this show years ago. Um, and I thought it was a fake person under it. I thought it was a, a prosthetic leg, but then it was actually a real person under it, and I started screaming. Um, oh my God. It was just like, there is a person under this. Uh, so there's a whole box where you can add a description about your artwork. Uh, but if you want to include process images, uh, if you have the finished piece, but you want to show the process of how you got to that finished piece, two pictures max, well, three pictures in general. Uh, do not submit multiple page PDFs. We do not want to see multiple page PDFs. If you like, since as a freshman you have to take all these courses, do yep. you have to like expand your portfolio? Like, do you want to see drawings if you? We want to see your ability to draw. We want to see your ability to use color. So a graphic design piece can show your ex your experience with color. Um, a sculpture can show your experience with color. Uh, how does your your work current work speak to drawing? How does your current work speak to design, spatial dynamics? Uh, you can do blind contour drawings, you can do uh, abstract drawing, you can do uh, technical drawings, uh, photorealistic drawings, but try to bring creativity to those observation pieces. 
Uh, and so how does photography speak to your understanding of color? How does photography speak to your understanding of drawing? Um, when you're drawing, uh, you have a better understanding of composition and that you use in photography as well. So it all depends on how you talk about it and how you frame it as well. When you say no text, does that mean no pieces that might include text as part of like, the design or like part of the art piece? Uh huh. One second. Would that not be okay? That's what I mean. Um, oh, okay. So text within the image. So we're getting a lot of this um, from students from Asia, where um, they are jam packing the image with. 20 pictures and then adding text and then they copy and paste and then put the text over here too. So it's like double work. So if the piece has but, text within it, like let's say you made a comic book. But if it's a comic book, that's book. fine. That's fine. But they're trying to add a description about the piece. They're trying to um, give an artist statement about the piece. So we're seeing a lot of this happening now. So we encourage students to not submit their artwork like this. Yeah. So try and avoid um, things like that. But we do have a, so, but we'll be at Portfolio Day, where it's four hours. Uh, National Portfolio Day, you will have the opportunity to speak with the admissions counselor, uh, a rep for 15 minutes about your portfolio. It's, uh, it's basically a critique. Uh, we spend 15 minutes looking through it, talking about it, and then you run to the next table. Uh, if you can't make it to Portfolio Day, if you are a freshman, if you're a sophomore, junior, let's say you get sick and you can't make it, there's also acad.slideroom.com. These are online portfolio reviews. Uh, so even after the portfolio day, you can upload your artwork. Let's say you get your feedback, you perfect your portfolio, you make changes, adjustments. You can then upload your artwork into ACAD and get another review. So you can upload your artwork as many times as you want. It's up to you. Um, you have options. The personal, in-person portfolio review, online portfolio review, financial aid, uh, we use the passive form and assist profile to determine what scholarship opportunities you'll have. Uh, scholarships can range from 2000 to 50000 Our scholarships are based on need. We do have four scholarships that are based on merit. Students who participate in the Scholastics competition and the Young Arts competition will give out two for Scholastics and two for Young Arts. Uh, what if you're awarded in the admissions process? You get to keep four years. Uh, if you win the lottery, if you come into a large sum of money somehow, we'll take the money from you, give it to another needy student. If nothing changes, you will keep the scholarships. You have to maintain a good grade point average. Yes. But our scholarships are based on past assistance profile. I, I was just wondering how many admissions counselors um, are there and how do you or, actually view the work? So do for us, group we, uh, so uh, students <coughs> will be reviewed two times by the committee. So the committee, so uh, I'm gonna use you as an example. So you are an applicant. So I'm going to review your application. She's going to review your application. So you get two reviews, and then those two reviews are taken to a committee of 20 people. So based on those two reviews, if they match up, if they do not match up, the committee will make the decision. So everyone, uh, so in the application process, we have uh, 4,400 applications. And it's basically, uh, 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 a lottery kind of system in slide uh, in slate. So basically, we hit five, and it'll just randomly pull five. We do not take all New Jersey and review all. Like I'm visiting Connecticut, but I'm not responsible for all the applicants from Connecticut. It's all case um, just random. Mm -hmm. So the system is random. So you have no idea who you're going to get. <coughs> so you can be area for area part part of country. Right, right. So I could have somebody in my in my queue who's from Arizona, somebody from New Mexico, somebody from Canada, somebody from South America. But I review those students, and then my review is done, and then it's sent to the next person, and then the committee will make the final decision. So it's not one person making the decision. So it's a committee. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. But yeah, we have RISD Careers uh, that help students seek out job opportunities, internship opportunities. We have an event called Internship Connect. Again, I have uh, books up there, two left, regarding uh, what alumni are doing after RISD. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to see work on, on portfolios.risd.edu uh, if you want to see what kind of work is being produced at the school. And we're also part of, ooh, I don't know what I just did. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, that's not what I want. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so we're on Facebook, 
where we have a, 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 a group where we answer questions as well. So the questions don't have to end here. You can ask us questions through email, Facebook, uh, phone call as well. Yeah. I have one question just to add. Um, I have some game and web design students in here as well. Do you guys offer anything in terms of that? I mean, would that fall into like graphic design and like yeah, film so and animation? So game would fall under illustration. You okay. can take classes in it. Uh, if you go to portfolio uh, uh, nationalportfolioday.org, you can actually search the schools by major, and you can see all the schools that offer game design. Web design would be under illustration and industrial design and graphic design, but it will be mostly under graphic design. Right. Thank yeah, you. The game would be under illustration, okay. and it's courses, right. but you can't get a major. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, that's pretty much presentation. <coughs> yeah. Any questions? Um, what's your state of website? Is For the portfolio review? Yeah. Uh, acad.slidroom.com. Yeah. And again, um, for us, you can upload your artwork as many times as you want with the ACAD slide room portfolio reviews. The only thing you have to keep in mind for those reviews is you have to create an account each time. You can't use the same account over and over and over again. So um, I just reviewed a student who uploaded her work seven times already. But she had to create an account each time. So we will do it until January 1st. <laughs> After January 1st, we will not review anyone. Do you still have the uh, iconic requirement of the, the bicycle? I forgot about that. So there is the assignment. Uh, so the bicycle has gone away. We are no longer uh, doing the bicycle. Um, but if you want to relive the bicycle, you can incorporate the bicycle in one of these three terms. So right. So now we are um, we're we're using these. So you have three terms that you can prompts that you can choose to tackle. So here uh, for 2018-2019, you have error, verify, and forge. You will pick one of those words and then create two pieces of art based on that one prompt. Next year, the prompts will be completely different or the RISD sign will be completely different. It might require something else. We will notify students in July that the RISD assignments will change. Uh, but this year, it's verify, forge, error. Again, you'll create two responses. It can be anything. It could be architecture. It could be photography. It could be um, film, animation, video. It could be jewelry. It could be furniture. It could be anything. Uh, it's an open-ended assignment. We give you the guidelines, but it's up to you to tackle it however you want to tackle it. Uh, but do not be literal. Uh, try to be symbolic. Try to use them as a metaphor. Uh, after that, you will upload them into Slack Room. There's two slots that are available for those two RISD responses. Do not upload your RISD uh, assignment into the actual portfolio. And then you write a reflection about, if you had more time, what would you do to develop that concept? So the RISD assignment is, do you do it after your assignment? No, 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 you, oh, okay. now, okay. yes, no, it's part of the application. So you, before you actually had to come to campus, years ago you had to come to campus and do like a whole bunch of drawings for RISD on the spot while people are watching you which is really cool, but that was way back in the day, but you don't have to do that. Everything will be uploaded. Okay. Uh, but you at some, you have to upload them um, February 1st on the deadline. Yeah. Oh, and do not wait until the day of the deadline to submit all your materials. You'll slow down the system. Just to warn you. Yeah. And even after 12 o'clock, it's now February 2nd, you can still upload stuff. We do not shut the system off. We have parents calling, like screaming at their kids, like, you missed the deadline. I'm like, no, there's a grace period. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I didn't tell you that at all. So. But do, I, I not kid you not, thing. don't do it all. No, My not. drawings, <laughs> when you had to physically mail them in, was actually on the throne. So, High school year, um, art teacher decided to put all my application materials on top of a trash can and forgot to move it. So the custodial staff thought it was trash. So my RISD assignment drawings, my essays, uh, my portfolio. This was when you had to use slides. Anyone know slides like the, they like set on fire when you feel the, the thing heats over? Yeah, um, all went to the landfill. I had two days to get my RISD assignment done and had to rewrite all my essays. 
and I don't remember half of it. I was like, and she was like, just just go home, because it was just like you feel defeated. You I mean, very low in life at that point. But it was just like, oh my god, I'm never gonna get into college. Still managed to get in college. But yeah, that was a low point. Well, I think we're both gonna wait yeah. a minute, but yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you're you're welcome. Welcome. I don't know why I ended up that.